The U.S. is getting a bit energy about China's electronic car game. Last week, they decided to throw a curveball, planning to restrict American car companies from getting subsidies if they use Chinese-made batteries. Hold up, it's not a ban. It's more like a no subsidies for you if you roll with Chinese batteries. Starting next year, if your car's battery is made or assembled by foreign entities tied to China, no sweet 7,500 tax break for you. And that is the FEOC. It includes organizations linked to China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. But wait, there's more. The US is playing the long game until 2025. If your batteries lithium, nickel, or the other kind of materials involves FEOC in this processing, no subsidies for you either. It's like, even if your battery isn't from China, but the lithium in it has a history with a China-linked company in Chile. Sorry, no subsidies for you. Huh? Bottom line, the US doesn't want China's battery industry stealing their business. So what kind of impact will the United States have by doing this? And can they achieve their purpose? How will this US move impact the electronic vehicle industry and us investors? Well, I'm Sheila Wang. I'm here to update on the most cutting edge and fresh business and investment information for you. So don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe my channel. I also welcome you to join the discussion in the comments below. And if you are interested in a more in-depth investing report, make sure to check out my analysis report. Now, let's dive into today's topic. Biden's government might be smiling, but U.S. car companies are not having a good time. Ford's iconic Mustang Much E must lose out of subsidies. And they were planning a $3.5 billion battery factory collaboration with China's CATL. The U.S. government is making Ford spill all the banks, worried that their cash will flow to China. Tesla's not thrilled either. They are shouting from their website rooftops to buy now and get a 7,500 tax break this year. Because Tesla knows their batteries can't fully escape the China ties, and even they are caught off guard by the US government's game plan. Maybe you are curious about why is the US throwing shade at its own companies with this unfriendly policy? Well, it's pretty obvious. They're fueling the hate from China's rapid growth in the new energy industry. They were worried that if they don't act, China's gonna leave them in the dust. But can this policy actually achieve their goals? I'm not convinced. I mean, it's not a solid, no way. But at this stage, the U.S. trying to create a purely made in the U.S.A. lithium battery? I think it's tough not to crack. China's been in the new energy game for ages, dominating every step from lithium processing to battery factories. Up in lithium processing, we were got the heavy heaters, Tianqi lithium and Ganfeng lithium, known as the lithium kings. According to the CRU group, a whopping 67% of global lithium processing happens in China. Now, let's talk about the four essential materials for making lithium batteries. Cathode, anode, separator, and electrolyte. China's got its fingers in all these pies, with over 70% capacity in each category, which get the highest point and its anode materials at a whopping 92%. This means lots of foreign battery factories are using Chinese materials. SK from Korea, for instance, dominates with over 50% market share in cathode materials, and even LG is deep into Chinese supplies. Well, as for the battery manufacturers, China's not just rolling with giants like CATL and BYD, as we know. Even second-tier players like Goshen High Tech are flexing their muscle. In 2020, out of the top 10 global battery companies, six were Chinese, securing over 50% market share. Wow, China basically nailed the entire lithium battery chain. 
Now, if the U.S. sticks to this policy and expands restrictions to raw material by 2025, they might find themselves stuck with all that money and nowhere to spend it, my guess. It seems like unreasonable, right? But they just did it. I guess they're just looking for an excuse to slap on some taxes. Back in May, the New York Times once asked, can the world make electronic vehicle batteries without China? And what about the conclusion? Without Chinese companies, nearly every country can't build their own battery supply chain. Even Ford CEO admitted that they had no other option but to choose CATL. And the batteries they made together are 15 cheaper, so with this subsidy restriction move, it seems like that US might just be picking a fight with themselves. Whether it will really hurt the enemies they're supposed to be, I don't know. You can just guess it. Now, let's check out what's happening across the pound in the Europe. Similarly, the Europe recently put a similar move with their anti-subsidy investigation. It's like, when you can win the fight fair and square, let's throw a curveball and mess with China's new energy industry. But guess what? Even with all that drama, China's electronic cars are still flying off the shelves. Even with all that drama, Chinese Association of Automobile Manufacturers in the troublemaking October for the euro, China exported a whopping 124,000 new energy vehicles. That's a 29.3% month-over-month -month growth and a 12.8% year-over-year surge. Looking at the bigger picture, for the first 10 months of this year, China shipped out a total 995,000 new energy vehicles, showing a jar dropping 99.1% a year over year increase. And guess who's leading the pack in the buying our new energy cars? Yeah, it's Belgium, Thailand, and the UK. Two of them right there in Europe. Like some Chinese companies are thinking of setting up shop directly over there. Furthermore, some Chinese companies are thinking of setting up shop directly over there using subsidiaries or joint ventures to dodge the not so friendly policy impacts. But because the US hasn't dropped the official list of which car models will get subsidies on the next year, folks are just playing it by ear. Let's be real, the US is risking falling behind in a new energy tech by 5 to 8 years. Looking at this big moves in the new energy car industry, it's giving me the same feeling with the chip industry, right? Chip war between China and US, here you can click my former video. Well, from my point of view, I think chips and new energy industry might be in different sports in the China run US game. But the common ground is that the US is choosing to uncouple from China. China went from being the US top trading partner in 2019, but dropping to fourth place in 2023. Despite some fancy footwork with curve entry to offsite part of the trading job, from the decoupling perspective, the U.S. policy are starting to pay off. You can argue that the U.S. is shooting itself in the foot, but hey, it's their core. Of course, the consequence of building words around yourself are hard to predict, right? The outlook for investing in the new energy industry has become more complex and mystery. So, as an investor holding related stocks, my current position in this area is as optimistic as it gets, and I won't be adding any more positions unless we see some breaking through tech or favorable policies. So my friend, I will keep a close eye on these changes. Please remember to stay tuned for the latest or first-hand information. See you next time.